when we dug out after the storm Friday morning, everyone was assessed, you know, a lot was not known about what the conditions were in Pune that morning. And, and a lot was not known in large part because the affected areas were without internet, power, telephone, TV, and no one really saw what had occurred. So I think the extent of the damage was not widely known in the first day or so. Uh, the next day, Saturday, the election proceeded in most of the polling places. There were two that were shut down, as I understand it, because of problems at the polling place itself. Didn't have electricity, and they were physically blocked in some cases. There was a couple other polling places in high, that, that serve highly impacted areas that proceeded to open as, as normal. Man, those serve many neighborhoods that were completely blocked in by fallen trees at that time. I had the very frustrating experience of trying to alert the elections office to the situation on the ground. I tried to call the state elections office, who has the power over this, over extending an election, numerous times on Saturday to explain I'm the state senator from this district. I want to explain the situation on the ground here and and try to get someone there to understand that some accommodation needs to be made. I called the governor's office, the civil defense office, the mayor's office, and the uh, state elections office, as well as the county clerk's office. I want to say the county clerk, Stuart Maeda, took my concerns seriously, always called me back, and I was very impressed with his responsiveness. Could not get through to the mayor or the governor that day. Um, but I spoke several times to the staff at the state office elections, requesting our state elections officer to call me back. He never called me back. He finally called me back three days later on Monday afternoon. Um, that was really frustrating because I was told by his staff and the county clerk that they had made an assessment based on a civil defense flyover that the roads in Pune were okay. They specifically quoted a couple of roads that had been blocked on Friday. They said Nanavali Boulevard and Highway 137 are open. Therefore, we're continuing with the election. And I was desperately and urgently trying to inform them that hundreds and probably thousands of people are stuck in their neighborhoods. The highway being open is nice, but it's irrelevant to someone who can't reach the highway. And the fact is that thousands of people did not have a chance to vote, not because they were apathetic or lazy, but because they were physically blocked by storm debris. So we have this community that was hit hardest by the storm, then hit, hard, hit by an, a, a bureaucratic decision that was based on false information. The decision was based on the idea that the roads are clear in Pune, the roads were not clear in Pune, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people who physically could not get to their polling place on Election Day. Their polling place closed at the normal time on Election Day, and that was it for their chance to vote. Now, one might say, what does it matter? Well, it matters because at least one of the races was very close. It doesn't, looking at the numbers, it doesn't seem so close. But the fact is, in our county council district four race, the incumbents neighborhood got to vote. That was Paradise Park. They voted in the delayed election. Two of the challengers, one lived in Pohiki, one lives in Nanavali. Both of those neighborhoods were completely blocked from voting, from accessing the voting booth on election day. Both of those places were assigned to a polling station that opened and closed on election day. One lives in Nanavali and has been very active in her community association for many years where thousands of people live and that neighborhood was completely blocked. The other, the, including the second, the, the, the first runner-up in the election, lives in Poiki area. And Poiki and Red Road were also physically blocked. At least half their residents were blocked from voting. Now the way our county council works, if one person doesn't get 50% of the vote, then it leads to a runoff. Um, and the count, one our incumbent councilman got 80 votes more than that 50 percent. So there were hundreds, thousands of people in his opponent's neighborhoods that didn't get to vote. And he gets, gets elected during that election. I believe that a lot of people are disenfranchised from their constitutional right to vote. 
It's also very disturbing that uh, someone sitting in an office in Honolulu would make a decision about what's going on in the outer islands while intentionally ignoring information that would correct his misunderstanding about what was really going on there. I don't think that whatever need there is to finish the election in a hurry cannot trump the rights of actual voters to vote. And it's not one, two, five, or ten. It's hundreds and maybe thousands of people did not get to vote that day. You know, there were apparently four different plans within five days of what, how we're going to handle voting. First, it was announced that uh, we're going to consolidate voting places. That was what was announced the day before the election. Then the day of the election, they didn't go with that plan. I can show you a picture I took of the sign outside Paradise Park's polling place. The sign says you will be mail mailed a ballot within the next 21 days for mail-in voting. And that's what the, the poll workers were telling people also. So people saw that sign, got that information, went home to their homes that don't have power, phone, internet, or TV. And then Monday afternoon, the elections office, for reasons unexplained, changed its mind after making that official announcement on election day to thousands of people changed their mind and said we're going to have an election three and a half days from now Friday for these two places that were closed and we're going to notify everybody by mail and other ways if we can and we're talking about people some of whom are still blocked in their house could not get down their road again no TV phone internet and they had three days to notify all these people what the what their election procedure will be I don't understand that. The original plan, which was announced legally by our officials to mail a ballot within 21 days, was a reasonable plan. They could, they could mail the ballot in 14 days and give people a week to send it back. In 14 days after the storm, almost everybody will be dug out and have access to their mail. It was a very reasonable plan to accommodate the two places that closed on Election Day. The plan they changed to on Monday afternoon was completely unreasonable, illogical. The reasons for the change never explained, and it harmed many, many voters who had been misinformed on what the procedure would be and who could not possibly get the notification they needed to get about when to vote.